Based on analyzing the table and graphing y equals cosecant of x, can you graph a period of y equals secant of x? So recall that the way that we graphed cosecant of x was that we started off with sine as our foundation. So for y equals secant of x, we're going to start off with y equals cosine of x and then use that as our foundation. And I know that our amplitude is 1, and so our range for our cosine function is between negative 1 and positive 1. I think that's a little bit high, so there we go. And we know that 1 period is equal to 2 pi. And normally cosine starts off here at 0, 1. And our graph of cosine looks something like that. Now, just like with when we were graphing cosecant, we are going to have vertical asymptotes wherever cosine is equal to 0. So cosine is equal to 0 at x equals pi over 2 and x equals 3 pi over 2. Now, I'm going through this a little bit quicker. and the graph of y equals secant of x, we're basically taking the reciprocal of each of these points. So we know that the reciprocal of 1 is 1, and the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. So our graph will go through these three green points. And then outside of that, basically we are going in the opposite directions close to the vertical asymptotes. So our graph is going to look like that. And that is one period of secant of x. And we can continue on if we wanted to and draw another period of the graph. State the domain and range of y equals secant of x. So the range, it turns out, is exactly the same as y equals cosecant of x, so the range is going to be negative infinity to negative 1 bracket union 1 to infinity. However, the domain is going to be slightly different since the vertical asymptotes are at different locations than cosecant of x. And so if we were to write this out in a sentence, we could say all real numbers except, and you'll notice that there's a vertical asymptote at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. There would be another one here at negative pi over 2, and another one on this side at 5 pi over 2. So all real numbers except odd integer multiples of pi over 2. And notice that it's odd, so pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi, etc. How do we write that in um, another way? Well, I'm going to, I'm kind of running out of room, so I'm going to come up here. Another way of saying that is x cannot equal pi over 2 plus n pi, where n is an integer. So that's another way of writing the domain. Plug in integers and verify that that is in fact correct. And if you know you plugged in 5 or something like that, or 6, would that give you an odd integer multiple of pi over 2? So I will leave that up to you to verify. So here are some general guidelines to graphing cosecant and secant functions. I will let you read over these. Let's go ahead and jump into an example. Example 1 says graph one period of the following, state the domain, range, amplitude, period, and phase shift. So let's go through some of these. We know the amplitude is 3. We know the phase shift is 0. The period, well, we need to calculate that. So 2 
pi over k. Our k value in this example is 2, so I'm going to erase k and replace that with 2. And if we simplify that, we end up getting pi. So our period is pi. And let's wait a moment before we figure out what the domain and the range are. So I'm going to label my y and x axis. I know that my period is pi, so I will place pi there. There's no horizontal or vertical shift, so um, I'm going to place my y values negative 3 and positive 3 there because that will be our highest and lowest values that are attained vertically. And here's 0. I know that halfway between 0 and pi is pi over 2. And I know that halfway between 0 and pi over 2 is pi over 4. And then I know that halfway between pi over 2 and pi is 3 pi over 4. So now I'm going to start plotting some points. And the guideline for this function would be to start off by building the foundation of 3 times the reciprocal function of cosecant, which is sine. OK, so we know that sine, if I plugged in 0, that would be equal to 3 times sine of 0. And I know sine of 0 is 0. And so that's going to end up being 0. So I'll put a point right here. We know our next point is going to be there, 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 and there. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in my vertical asymptotes now. OK, and I'm going to use a dashed curve to subtly fill in what our sine graph would look like. But that's not why we're here. That's not why we came to the show. We came to the show to see cosecant. So I know that uh, the highest and lowest points are shared with the sine graph since, well, let's just, let's see an example of, of how that's true. So y equals 3 times cosecant of 2 times, let's plug in pi over 4 and see what happens. So that's going to be equal to 3 times cosecant of 2 times pi over 4 is going to simplify to pi over 2. And then using the reciprocal identity, that's equal to 3 times 1 over sine of pi over 2. And I know that sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, so that is going to simplify to 3. So that's how I know that the y value at that point is 3 when I plug in pi over 4. And then everywhere else, it's going to look like this. And that is one period of this graph. Let's go ahead and fill out the domain and range. So the domain, as you'll notice, there is a vertical asymptote at 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. So how are we going to write that? Well, that's going to be x is equal, not equal to um, integer multiples of pi over 2. So x does not equal n times pi over 2, where n is an integer. So that's how we would write that. If you wanted to write it in a sentence, you could say all real numbers except 
integer multiples of pi over 2. So that's just another way of stating the domain. And then the range, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to write it down here. The range is negative infinity to negative 3 bracket union bracket 3 comma infinity parentheses. So that is our range. This is our domain. Uh, this is our amplitude, this is our period, and this is our phase shift. And that concludes this example.